Hello, this video is, is to demonstrate the finished product for my third year project, Control of a Mechanical Robot Arm. The objective of this project was to specify sensors that could be mounted to a simple toy robot arm that will allow closed loop control to be performed using, in this case, a microchip PIC18F4520 microcontroller. The chosen sensor type to be used in the project is an accelerometer, not too dissimilar from the ones found in iPhones and other such devices. Once like a controller is turned on, the LEDs for bits 0 to 5 on the input output board begin a simple counting sequence that is used as a holding pattern. Upon pressing push button 1, the microcontroller advances the program to the next stage in its cycle. In this stage, the microcontroller uses the onboard ADC to read a value from the potentiometer shown here for the proportional gain, multiplying this value by 0.01 or 0.001 depending on the position of the leftmost switch being on an off or on position respectively. This is locked in place by pressing push button 1 again. This, in the final stage of this part of the program, the microcontroller looks for a differential gain via the same, using the same system as shown before. And upon pressing push button 1, returns the program back to a holding pattern in order for any switches that have been activated to be cleared. Once all the readings for the proportional integral and differential gains have been read, the program can then be advanced to its final stage by pressing push button 1 again. In this stage, the microcontroller reads a value from the potentiometer for the set to use as the set point for the control system. The microcontroller then uses the voltage read from the potentiometer and compares it to the, acce to the accelerometer at the current position. Using a PID controller with the respective gains set from the earlier steps, the program then calculates the direction and speed required to reach, to reach the set point. The motors will then be active by pressing the rightmost switch on the 8-bit switches. The motor will then start to move when the, when the switch is pressed, which will, which will enable the H bridge to drive the motor. As you can see, the, the, the robot arm is trying to home to the new set position. This can be changed during this during this during this sequence of the program by alternating by changing the value on the potentiometer. The motors are then turned off by pressing the switch back to the off position, and the program is then sent back to the beginning of, to the beginning of its sequence in the holding pattern by pressing push button one one last time. This this allows new proportional integral and differential gains to be set for the program for the sequence to be run again to to compare the different types the effects of the different gains on the control system. I shall now be demonstrating the controller using just proportional gain and showing the response of the actuator when the gain is set high and low. I shall first set the gain towards the lower limit. This is done by setting the leftmost switch and turning the potentiometer to the left. The integral and differential gains will both be set to zero for, the purpose, for this particular purpose. Now I, shall make the, now I shall make the actuator move between uh, different set points as controlled by the potentiometer. I should now repeat the same experiment, but by setting the proportional gain towards the upper limits. This is done by leaving, this, leaving the leftmost switch cleared and setting the potentiometer to the right. 
Again, the integral and differential gains will both be set to zero. And again, I shall move the arm through different, through different set points. It can be seen, I suppose, to the last lower potential, potential gain, the response is a lot faster. And in some cases, particularly when moving back down again, there is some degree of overshoot. I should now discuss the reasons using a closed loop control system to control the position of the arm within this project as opposed to an open loop system. With an open loop controller, the output of the system is proportional to the input with no feedback. An example would be the DC motor that moves the arm. The speed that it turns at is proportional to the voltage that's being applied. This is acceptable for the motor as for the motor, as the system can be sufficiently well characterized to determine the output for different inputs. However, the movement of the actuator isn't as simple. As the arm approaches its new set point, the speed needs to be reduced so that, so that it doesn't overshoot or come to a sudden jarring stop. In addition to the speed, the arm also moves with and against gravity depending on its direction of movement, requiring a less sudden stop when moving upwards compared to when moving down. If an open loop system was to be applied, constant monitoring from a human operator would be required to change the speed of the system. As human reaction times are slow compared to that of the control platform, this can be seen to be undesirable. Therefore, a closed loop control system was chosen to be used. This is the end of my project video. Thank you for watching.